Hey, what's up? It's Edison. I kind of wanted to go over eBay's new shipping policy for trading cards. They launched a new program to kind of help the trading card sector and pretty much all the sellers that are doing cheap singles on eBay, which I think is honestly a, a very large portion of Pokemon and baseball and like all these sports cards. A lot of that is going to be your cheap singles. And I think if you do want to take this somewhat seriously and if you do want to make money long term in this, you have to know how to ship cards cheaply. And you have to be able to ship, you know, two, three dollar cards comfortably. Not every card you have is going to be like a home run. Not every card is going to be a couple hundred and even like 30, 40 dollars. A lot of these cards that you have and are going to pick up over time and through collections and whatnot, are going to be in that two to three dollar, maybe ten dollar range max. So you have to just kind of learn the method. And eBay is doing a huge thing to help people out right now. So I want to show off the method that I've been using to ship a couple like hundreds of cards at this point. This is the way that I do that's fairly safe and I use plain white envelopes. So I kind of want to go over the supplies first. I recommend you pick up some plain white envelopes. This is the size that I use. It's a, let me see, three and a half, no, three and five eighths by six and a half. This is a good size if you have a label printer like I do. I have a Dymo 4XL, which does like a four by six label. And I'll show you why I like this size in a second. But these boxes are pretty cheap. This one had 55, I paid like, I think maybe $2 after tax, and that's on the expensive end. I think you can get them a little bit cheaper at Walmart and on Amazon, but this was from Target, and this is pretty much all I had at the time that I went. But yeah, pick up plain white envelopes and try to honestly go for the higher quality ones. I know you can somewhat cheap out, as I mentioned, but if you get a little bit of a thicker stock, which they sell like on Amazon, I've preferred those more because I just feel more comfortable when I ship the cards in like a heavier envelope because I know that it's kind of protected in transit. And you just got to think like, this is going to be rule of thumb. Think if you were the buyer of the card, how would you want it to show up to you? And I think most of the time you prefer a sturdier envelope. You just feel better. So we're going to start with the envelope. I actually have an example one made up. So this is like typically like in the past, this is a mock-up of, of how you would do your envelope to ship something. You would do your address in the top left corner, the buyer's address in the center, and then you would throw your stamp. And I have some stamp examples. So yeah, I just have a sheet of forever stamps right here. Like uh, you just buy these at the post office. So you just throw the stamp right there, which is 55 cents a piece. And that remember that 55 cents, that's gonna be like an important number. Uh, yeah, this is the traditional setup. And this is what you've had to do in the past, but eBay's new system is actually gonna replace this. And I'll show that very soon. But yeah, let me see. Uh, the next thing that you're gonna th need besides the envelopes, I recommend personally is going to be nice sleeves. I'm using these Rebel Clash Dex uh, Elite Trainer Box sleeves. You can use the Ultra Pro ones. If you're shipping cards out, always ship in a top loader. Like this is two things. Always ship in a top loader. So you're gonna always need top loaders around and always uh, always have sleeves. So like, let's do a cost breakdown right now of how much it actually costs to ship one of these cards. So the top loaders, they're pretty expensive right now, but I just purchased around 500 at $75. So like doing the math that comes out to around, I think 14 or 15 cents. I'm gonna put it on the screen, like around on this right left-hand side area. So we can like total up how much shipping is, but you're gonna need top loaders and you're gonna need envelopes. So let's add both of those up and you're going to need sleeves. Thankfully, penny sleeves realistically are a penny each. So you can do one cent or uh, elite trainer box sleeves. I, I bought a bunch of Rebel Clash ETBs to crack and I just had the sleeves left, so left over. And I do prefer selling some of the shipping some cards in this because the sleeve's a little bit sturdier. Uh, it doesn't really have that give as like a penny sleeve. But either way, like your your sleeve cost should be very low. But you're gonna probably pay up a little bit for top loaders at the moment. And as I said, uh, these envelopes are pretty cheap. So yeah, so three supplies so far. You need sleeves, top loaders, envelopes, and the next thing that I recommend, and this is like the biggest the biggest tip I can tell anyone: get masking tape. This is a roll of masking tape here. So why you need this is, uh, I'll show you in a second. Actually, let me get that stuff ready. So yeah, get masking tape as your next supply. I'm gonna cut the video right here because I wanna do some math with you, uh, just to do like the total cost of shipping these cards. So first off, we're gonna do the top loader. I quoted it at 15 cents per top loader, which is a little bit high right now just because they're in such high demand. Next up is sleeves. I did a little bit of a range between one cent to five cent. I think this is pretty safe. Uh, depending on really on what type of sleeve you use and where you're getting them from. Envelopes, I put at four cents. That is just based off of the example that I gave uh, for how many envelopes I got and what I paid. 
And then the last thing I showed was that masking tape. Right here, we can see a screenshot of if you buy the masking tape on Amazon, it's around six bucks. That's honestly a little bit higher than I think if you went to like an actual store, a hardware store, especially it's probably gonna have it cheaper. But if we look at the size of a masking tape roll, it's around 50 meters. So I measured it out uh, and you're gonna see this later on in the video, but I use around one centimeter to tape every card down. So in the long run, I can get 5,000 cards or I can get 5,000 uses out of one roll of masking tape. And even at $5 for a whole roll, even $6 for a roll, that brings my actual cost down to such an astronomically low amount that it's almost insignificant. And I think it's just like very important. So your real total cost in is going to be around 20 cents of packing supplies per card. And that's not including the shipping price. But yeah, I just wanted to show that you're gonna spend around 20 cents per card to get it packaged. And what I do, like say I make a sale on the card, what I then do is I print out uh, the invoice, like the, kind of like the invoice or the payment info on the shipping details. I don't, I don't know the exact, oh, the packing slip, sorry. I print out the packing slip on the eBay like seller platform. And this is what they normally come out to. So it has like the buyer info up here. It has the information of the item they bought like towards the bottom. And underneath that, you can put a personal message. Uh, if you've ever bought from my store, like I just have something saying like, thank you for shopping with me. Uh, make sure to like follow us on social media or like, uh, and then I think it also says like, just make sure to check back for updated stock. This is like kind of standard. And what you're gonna do with this, well, what I've done in the past is I grab my card in the sleeve, put it in the top loader, then I take it and I kind of center it in the top right hand corner. And I grab my little thing of masking tape. And these are pretty cheap too. So like, let's do a, a buy cost analysis. So like, look how th long, like look how much tape you have and look how thin of a strip you use each time. You really only need like a little slab like that, that much masking tape. And what I do is I take that tape horizontally and I tape the front of the top loader shut and that tapes it to the packing slip. So we get two things out of this. We are closing the top loader so the card can't really move out. It's kind of shut in and stuck in the space. And we're also taping it to the packing slip. So it's not gonna move around in transit. And then why, this is kind of like the combination of why I like this size envelope. I then fold the packing slip up and then do it like this. So you do like two folds, kind of like this, just kind of mimic this if you, if you want. This is good for packing slips uh, of like the four by six side from label printers. And you can do this with full sheets of paper. Uh, you're probably just going to need to either get bigger envelopes or do a lot more folds. And then I take this, I put it into my envelope. I normally face them this way. So the card is kind of facing outwards. And look, the four by six kind of folded up nicely like that. It takes up a majority of the room. So it's not gonna be wiggling around very much. And then you just seal it with this tab at the top. I mean, every envelope's different, but yeah, you seal it. So in the past, this is exactly how I would ship my singles. Just write the stuff out, put the card attached to a top loader sleeve and packing tape to a packing slip and then put a stamp on it. And then I just dropped this off in the mailbox. The problem with this in the past was that you pay 55 cents to ship and you pay all this other money for like the supplies, which we're gonna have like the total, as I said, on the left-hand side, uh, you don't get tracking. So if the buyer does say something has come up or like they didn't get their package, you're not insured by PayPal or even eBay. So this is my recommendation. This is what eBay is doing now is they launched a new program for sellers. So what you do on the seller platform is if you sell a cheap single, you're going to have the option on the shipping area to kind of purchase the, the eBay standard delivery for, I, I forgot the exact name. I'm going to put it on the screen, the eBay standard letter, I believe. And let me show you an example of what that looks like. And this is how it comes out. If you're going to buy the eBay standard letter stamp with tracking, it comes up to 51 cents for a one ounce package. It's so like, this is around one ounce. Most of these cards that you ship, if you ship one card is one ounce, even with the top loader and the, the packaging. So instead of using a 55 cent stamp that you buy that doesn't have tracking, you can go on eBay and pay 51 cents and you're gonna get tracking like this. And it's not just the stamp that you paste there, it comes out on the full sheet. So this is absolutely perfect if you have a label printer, you can just print it out. I'm gonna show you, like this is an example, I'm not gonna show actual, uh, you know, uh, customer info, you take your eBay label and you just place it right on top of your letter like that. And it's kind of a little sloppy, but yeah, I'm going to trim it down. I trim it down when I actually use it, 
but this is what it looks like. You just have the same info that you would write, but eBay handles it all. They handle the stamp, they handle the seller address that goes there, the buyer's address, and they give you a tracking. So it's actually a lot easier to ship with the eBay method than it is to have done it in the past. And you're gonna have tracking, as I mentioned, which is important, because even though I've shipped a couple hundred cards like this and I've had no issues, it's just like something that you worry about. And if you can pay four cents less to ship each individual card and to get insured for that, like I don't see a reason why you wouldn't do that. All right, that's pretty much it. This was like a very straightforward thing just to show you how to ship cheap cards. You can do this method with the top loader for up to three cards in the top loader from my experience. If you want to do uh, like a couple cards at once, maybe up to 10 cards, what I've done in the past is similar to how I do the top loader here. Instead of taping the top loader down, I'll get a team bag and I'll throw the 10 cards in a team bag and tape, tape the team bag down. Same exact method, uh, more or less, just replacing the top loader with team bag. So this is pretty simple. I, I think this is the best way to ship cheap singles if you can. I, this also involves you having a label printer. You can, as I said, use regular size paper, but you're gonna have to fold it more. But this is a very good way of protecting your cards. Oh, and, and to mention this too, we're using packing tape here because if you shipping tape like that clear tape, it leaves residue and scotch tape as well. Scotch tape and packing uh, shipping tape leave a residue on the top loader and it's extremely hard to peel off. If we do it this way, look how simple this is. Take it out like that, peels off right away. No marks at the top of the top loader. No worries from the buyer if it's gonna stick to their card. And packing tape is so cheap. Like it's ridiculously cheap. It's a simple solution to ship your cards and hold them down without leaving any sticky glue residue. All right, that's it. I hope this makes sense. I hope this kind of explained like how to ship with the eBay program. It's very straightforward, as I mentioned. When you sell a card on eBay, just go onto the shipping options and it should be there. So yeah, if you have any questions, let me know, but this is going to be it. All right.